Tarot, Part 5, A Lesser Arcana and Complete Deck. Just as to assemble the 22 trumps on a lattice structure, we arrange them as the 3 horizontal, 7 vertical, and 12 diagonal paths on a Hakabalistic Tree of Life diagram. So too can the complete deck be arranged on the combinations of the Gras tradition of the Tree of Life diagram of a Tesseract Hypercube with Steve Savedow's Tree of Death diagram of a Stelloctahedronal Hypertetrahedron. When we do this, we find there are 32 mystical paths of wisdom connecting 10 sephirot to 7 chakras. If we add the entire system as one complete element, we sum 50 natural attributes on this chart. And if we double the attributes of the original 22 trumps, we achieve the mystical number 72, the original intended sum for the attributes now assembled as the tarot deck of 78. The usual number of cards in a standard modern tarot deck, the Lesser Arcana, differs from the number of cards in a regular playing card deck. There are four royal cards for each of the four suits, each numbered ace, two through ten in usual tarot, totaling 56 cards. There are only three royal cards per four suits of ten cards each in a standard deck of playing cards, and the aces count as royals. Thus, there are a total of 52 cards in a regular playing card deck. This implies the number of lesser arcana in the tarot deck may indeed be malleable, and instead of 56 cards, total instead only 50. Although we studied the imagery of the 22 major arcana tarot trumps, because we were relating them to the original hieroglyphic syllabary of the Anunnaki language, that broke apart into the various phonetic alphabets at the time of the confusion of the tongues and the rise of ancient Babylon. We will not be studying the modern Tarot depictions of anthropomorphic characteristics of the 56 lesser arcana of the regular deck. Suffice it to say that there are traits attributed for each by the Golden Dawn deck, but that only the original 22 trump traits are described in the original cipher documents upon which the Golden Dawn was founded. These 22 correspond to the paths on the Tree of Life, the Hebrew letters, and all their other relative attributes. Each of the four suits of the classic deck had, in the Golden Dawn Tarot arrangement, an ace card, followed in suit by a two, a three, and so forth, until the 10 card appears last. Next, each suit was followed by four royal cards, including a prince, knight, queen, and king. The four usual suits of tarot were labeled cups, wands, swords, and coins or pentacles. These differ from the modern suits in the standard deck of playing cards used today, given as clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. Usually the suits are seen as corresponding to one another. Thus, cups equals hearts, wands equals clubs, swords equals spades, and coins equals diamonds. So, we see in the common decks of today an agreement on the 40 numbered cards, including aces as ones, of the four suits of 10 cards each. These 40 are unalterable attributes of the decks. However, the number of royal cards differs between the tarot decks, where there are four royal cards per suit, and the usual playing card decks, where there are only three royal cards per suit. Thus, to the usual base of 40 cards, we can add any other number of royal cards per suit to complete the deck. Next, let us consider the 50 letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. These were, just like the 22 Hebrew, Greek, Phoenician letters, an independently invented alphabet of phoneme sounds equally ancient in origin. They derive from between the Proto-Ganges 
script and the pre-Hindu Vedic period in the Indian subcontinent. In the same way the 22 phonetic letters of Middle Eastern origin correspond to hieroglyphs, Hebrew letters, zodiac signs or planets of astronomy, etc., so these 50 Sanskrit letters have their correspondent traits in both the ancient Sumerian and the ancient Egyptian civilizations contemporary to its origin, and when they are combined with the 22 Trump letters, form an alphabet of 72 Atu. The 50 Sanskrit letters of the Vedic era Indian subcontinent corresponded in Sumeria to the post-Tower of Babel construction project, Babylonian Empire's 50 names of their patron deity, Marduk. These were originally listed in the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian adaptation of the Sumerian Bible, the Book of Enki. They represent the Babylonian era replacements for the original names of 50 unique deities in the Sumerian pantheon of the Anunnaki. At a cocktail party in the 1970s AD, a group of occultish H.P. Lovecraft fans drafted 50 sigils for these 50 names and released their work as a modern addendum to the traditional worship of the Sumerian Anunnaki pantheon in the form of the so-titled Necronomicon, meaning Book of Dead Names. Before we discuss the correspondent Egyptian traits, of the 50 Sanskrit letters, we must consider the impact of reducing the cards of the Lesser Arcana to the number of letters in the Sanskrit alphabet on the card deck known now as the Tarot. The first Tarot is dated to positive 1465 year Pythagoras from Padua, Italy, and was the work of painter Andreas Mantegna. It consisted of 50 plates of 10 anthropomorphic symbols in five sets. The first 40 of these correspond to the first 40 numbered cards in the usual deck. They signified the 10 social statuses in class society, the 9 muse daughters of Apollo and the sun god himself, the 10 liberal arts and sciences of scholasticism, and the ten cardinal virtues of ordinal Catholicism. The final ten cards signified ten heavenly spheres, including the seven usual planets of contemporary astrology, as well as the prima mobile, or starred sphere, the prime mover, and the prima causa, symbolizing the supernal trinity of Catholic Christianity. These five sets, called decades, for having ten image plates in each, were the first authentically European card game, evolving by 1524 into basic trapola of 36 cards, from whence the modern 22 trumps and the 40-odd lesser arcana originate. While the notion of combining the 22 trumps with the 40 numbered cards to yield the same sum of attributes as the 64 hexagrams of I Ching, ties the ideal tarot deck to the ancient Orient as well as the Mideast and Africa. The method of yielding the sum 72 by combining the 40 numbered cards and the 22 tarot trumps with 10 royal cards derives from a concept most sacred to Pythagoras, the famous pre-Greek mathematics cult leader. Pythagoras, who may have invented the standardized Phoenician, Hebrew, Greek alphabet of 22 letters, recognized that assigning number sums to each letter allowed one to apply mathematics, in which Pythagoras delighted, to the spelling of words and the constructions of sentences. The four Hebrew letter name of God, called the Tetragrammaton, consists of three letters, one repeated twice. Yod, Y, He, H, Vav, V or W, and He, H, again. Pythagoras was quick to note that, 
when assembled as a talisman on top of the Tetractus, one of Pythagoras' most favorite shapes. The letter's number sums for the Tetragrammaton added up to a magical number sacred to her Kabbalah. Yod, the tenth letter, plus yod he totaled 25, plus yod he va totaled 46, plus the complete tetragrammaton totaling 26 would yield the magic sum of 72 by alphanumeric gematria. This pattern for the ten sephiroth traits implies a tetractus as a possible pattern for the ten royal cards necessary to bring the forty numbered cards up to the sum of the Mantegna Tarot, the names of Marduk, and to the letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. By adding ten to forty to yield fifty, and by adding twenty-two to fifty, we yield seventy-two. The seventy-two names and sigils of the Goetia that apply as ascendant, cadent, and decadent to each of the twelve signs of the zodiac are the spirits allegedly used by King Solomon to build the first temple to God in Jerusalem. However, they date to much older than this in origin. The Baal Shem, or name of God, of 216 letters, as featured in the modern movie Pi, Faith in Chaos, derives from three verses in the book of Exodus, comprised of 72 letters each that describe the parting by Moses of the Red Sea. By taking these three columns as 72 rows, we derive 72 names of three letters each, the so-called Shem Hamfarash. However, the base 72 system originated prior to Moses leading the Hebrews in the Exodus out of Egypt, as evidenced by the so-called Bembine Tablet of Isis, dating from 1st century Rome, following after a lost Egyptian original. The Bembine Isis table is widely held, though rarely understood how, to represent the original version of a Tarot deck. It has three rows of 12, 5, and 12 characters surrounded around the edge by 72 hieroglyphs. The original intended meaning of the Bembine Isis tablet is untranslated, however by applying the techniques described in this lecture of attributing the 22 letters to a hieroglyphic syllabary, we may begin to come closer to unlocking the ancient mysteries of the Torah.